Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball. Worst to first series, episode number four. And we're still pretty much the worst right now. At 24 and 39, we're sucking pretty bad. But at least we beat the Yankees 10 to 9 in our last game. But it's certainly not all uh, not all roses. We've had some bad news. Uh, Grom out for the season. Bauer, Trevor Bauer out for uh, four to five months. And yes, this one affects us. Mitch Hanniger, who just came back, uh, it's sore shoulder, but out for three weeks with a sore shoulder, even though he just started playing. That's a strange one. Uh, he's listed day to day. But it's a three-week injury. That's certainly 15-day DL sort of territory if there's somebody we want to call up. Oh, nice. Okay, we got a scouting trip. Yeah, he's just a half-star kind of guy, though. So is there a player that we would want to bring in? I mean, we lost the right fielder we had, which means we're very much short right now. So let's let's take a look and see if our AAA affiliate has anything. Can I... Take a look at just my, yeah, there you go. Ooh, Donovan Walton's doing pretty good. Two star guy, pretty good defense. Good discipline at the plate. He's only done 20 days in the major leagues, but he's mad because he's not playing there now. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's his 20 days in the majors where he played five games a year ago. But before that, he's never been anywhere other than double A. He is hot right now. That would be a good time to bring him up. Uh, we do have Kyle Lewis. Okay, so Kyle Lewis is at 193 at bats, 55 hits, 15 doubles. He's got good gap power. Power. He's got good overall power. He's leading our Triple A team in RBI by a fairly wide margin, other than one guy. Uh, he's also the leading scorer by a wide margin. And he's right behind Walton on walks. Strikeouts aren't terrible. He does ground into double plays a bit too often. Those two are definitely doing the best. So Kyle Lewis, yeah, good discipline. He's a two-star guy with a little more potential. He can play anywhere in the outfield, though he's not great at center. He's got decent range and a decent arm on him. He's okay running the bases. He's also expecting to play in the major leagues and he's had a total of 20 days i wonder if he was involved in the same call up a year ago probably a september call up started 17 games in the eight, in the 20 days he played pretty well during that stretch and yeah he's he's got the same arc he's 
He's on a minor league contract. But I would imagine he's got... Option years. He does. That's... That's a new thing, secondary roster. I think the, the new September call-ups don't automatically use options, don't automatically, uh, that's, that's good, don't automatically have to be on the 40 man. No wonder we have fewer players on the 40 man roster. I think Kyle Lewis is gonna be a good call-up. While Hanager is out injured, which means let's go into this one. And we want to take Mitch Hanager. I put you on the entered list. Ten day. And I'm gonna take it was Lewis, right? Yes. Promote him to Seattle. I think they automatically did. Automatically, automatically put onto the forty man. And we move forward a day, and it's time for the fun to begin. <laughs> Six one loss there. Is this us? No. It's first year player draft is today. We're gonna be picking sixth overall. Just gonna give us a decent choice of player. Uh, we're definitely going for the best potential out there. Not necessarily somebody who's gonna be ready soon as we're building for the long term, not the short term. All right, so we have 2.6 million budget. We do need to look at signability as a thing. Have they changed the format yet, or are we still going to be seven rounds? Picking sixth in each round. Slot 5.5. .5. A little over seven, eight, eight and a half, nine. And it's still a bunch of rounds down to twenty five. Okay. Draft. You have complete draft, complete round, or to our next pick. Well, let's see what Detroit does. 
Oh, that's Detroit. That has 12.6 million. That's not us. You're not going to tell me who they drafted. Oh, there you go. Shortstop Austin Martin went first. Asalasi, I think, was only... F oh, no, he was one of the top couple. Miami. Emerson Hancock. Nick Gonzalez. Jordan Walker. And we're up. We have a huge budget. That's good. 21.3 million. We have more than enough money uh, for the, what, eight, nine that we need for the slots that we're in, meaning we can afford to spend more uh, on players. So we have 233 in the organization. This is, let's see, what's the 29? What we have in the 40 man, but the total organization, I think. So first base and DH is down a little bit. Third base is down quite a bit. Outfield is pretty thin for us. So is our starting pitchers. All right, so we have six three-star potential kind of guys. And what are we according to right now? And this is all batters, by the way. Not sure which one we're looking at. There you go. That plays out a little differently. What are the OSPA? There's four guys with four. Spencer Torkelson. A couple catchers with really good potential. But our scouting accuracy Of those, just kind of looking at maybe a Spencer Torkelson. Talking about a big home run threat with good gap power, good contact, good discipline. He's just going to strike out a bit. He's got okay speed. He'll play left, right, or first. And is a decent defender. That is that is not uh, not bad. Currently is a junior at Arizona State. And while he's expecting a lot of money, it's not a big deal for us. He's signable. And what he's expecting is pretty close to what our slot is. Meaning, it's not a big deal. Uh, he's hitting right about 300 almost a 1.0 OPS. It's above replacement, 2.4. He's hitting a lot of homers, RBIs. And a lot of extra base hits. I mean, that's 30 extra base hits out of 60. Half of his base hits have gone for more than just a single. Well, he struck out 37 times. He has 29 walks, which means he actually has got pretty good discipline now. And you can see it. His contact just really needs to develop. It's a pretty good player. Let's check OSA versus us. We don't think he's going to be as good. And our scouting accuracy is pretty high. Theirs is average. 
I don't think he's going to be great at first. I think he's not quite there. But let's say he falls somewhere in between, right? That's pretty good. So Torkelson, big option. Uh, but let's compare him with these other guys. This is a terrible fielder. Definitely a first baseman. We have him much lower than they have him. He'll have some home run power, but I think Torkelson's going to be a considerably better prospect. Check out these other two. Ooh, we have him down at two and a half stars. Okay, I think that's seen enough there. And Brady Smith, also down at two and a half stars with high accuracy. And we're completely off the charts from where the OSA have him. Okay, so if we're going with a fielder, it's it's going to be Torkelson. Let's go ahead and take a look at those all players. That's one way to shake it up. Oh, Mick Abel's still available. Oh, man. This is my scouting. My scouting has Jared Kelly and Mick Abel as the best. Their demands are quite high, but again, we have money to pay. So we think that Mick Abel, oh, and he's a hometown guy-ish. He's committed to Oregon State, but he's from Jesuit in Portland. Yeah, well, that's my hometown, my area. 0.36 ERA in high school as a senior. Dang, son, dang. Stan is not great. It's not that great at holding runners either. Uh, he's okay dealing with sacrifice bunt. Oh no, 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 that's his role. He can sack bunt. That doesn't matter. We don't need a pit. We don't need a hitting pitcher. He's already got a good fastball, and it's going to get even better. Apparently, he will develop his slider and change up pretty well. His curveball will be usable. He's going to have good stuff. Movement and control should be up there. This guy certainly would be a quality starter, from the looks of it. And the OSA has him placed even higher. 95 to 97. Three-quarter arm. Power pitcher. That's somebody you can see. Taking some injury. He's not going to have great stamina, though. But this, this might be our guy now. I, mean, I like Torkelson, but we're talking about a big-time... pitcher, which is something we lack. Our starting pitchers are, are quite weak. Of course, we're talking years down the road, but the other one we want to take a look at is probably Bailey. I don't know. Kelly. There it is. Movement's good, stuff's going to be good, but he's going to struggle with control a little bit. He's already got a really good fastball. He's going to have an excellent changeup in slider, according to the OSA. Also struggling with stamina, but better at holding runners. Also coming out of high school. Wants even more money. Now we think he's going to have good stuff and movement, but again, struggle with control, which means he's going to walk quite a few guys. He'll be hard to hit, but he's going to walk quite a few guys. I think honestly, going with the hometown guy, I 
think. Let's go back. Mock draft had. <laughs> Make Abel go into us. And it certainly does appear that he, Jordan Walker, went to, I think, Toronto. But outside of that, it has followed exactly what they said. Torkelson dropping to 10th. I think that's a good sign that Mick Abel is our guy. Three and a half or four star potential means he's going to go pretty high up the list. Uh, so, meet demand, offer slot, or draft player and deal with it later. Uh, I think we go with his bonus demand. Otherwise, we're in real trouble on getting this guy signed, right? If we go slot, we're nowhere near what he's demanding. And again, we had some... Uh, we had some leeway. I think this guy's a big time sign. And we'll still have nine million to sign the others. Just means we can't go big time in the next round or two anyway. Let's go ahead and push through that the rest of the first round here and get to our next pick. All right, so we're into the second round. We're at 14 mil, and it looks like we still have one of the better players. Brady Smith is still available. So catcher Brady Smith still out there, but we only think he's maybe a two and a half star kind of guy. The contact, the home run power, we do not agree with. And you know, we've scouted him pretty well. Kevin Abel, is he related? No. All right, so at this point, everybody we have left is two and a half. And we're at all players. Let's... Switch to them. So they've got, again, Brady Smith above everybody else. Catchers are never a bad thing. His demands are normal. His signability is is quite high. Check out these other guys though. Brandon Fields. Looks like Heschen. Let's see, where is he from? Texas? Kajurstad? I think where uh, how he would pronounce that depending on what his Heritage is. We'll say I have him as three and a half. We have him as a two and a half. We've got him as a pretty good base runner. Play the whole outfield, but isn't great anywhere. We do have him with a pretty good arm. Got him with pretty good power. We've got him with okay power. Contact looks not great. But this is a player who's already relatively developed as a junior in college right now. Signability is normal. OPS about a 900. He's a 
pretty solid player. But it would be nice if he was a better outfielder, right? He's a center fielder. But he's really not that great. It says easy on the signability. Definitely don't care about the relievers. Got a lefty here. Hunter with an excellent curveball. It's already good. And yes, he's got an excellent curveball. We just don't think his stuff's going to be quite as great. But the scouting accuracy is not fantastic. Pretty good stamina. And of Georgia Tech. I think he's a better choice right now than uh, anyone but maybe the catcher. I just lost track of scouting. Smith. Fields. Okay. They really like his <laughs> hitting. He's hitting 458 in high school. Okay, and we like him. I think he's going to develop his power a little more than his contact. Left field, right field, and actually is a decent fielder. It's just won't play center. He's a pretty decent option. Bonus demand is 650k. Injury proneness is normal. It's hard to sign though. Alright, so I think we have three choices Smith, Fields, or Herder. I think we need to go with somebody who's going to produce a little more for us, or do we go for that best option? Well, two of these guys are hard to sign. So do we go for the one who's signable and might have the best potential of all of them? about Fields is we know more about him than we do about the others. <laughs> Fields is a little bit younger. Maybe we go with Herder. Let's do it. And he is a little more than the recommended slot. Let's go ahead and meet his demand. Let's get to that third round. Oh, and look who's still out there. Brandon Fields whose demand isn't that high. At this point, we definitely want to take fields. The slot is higher than uh, his demand. So we'll go ahead and offer for the slot. And into the fourth round. Okay, we are up to 17, so we got to be careful going forward. And at this point,
best one out there appears to be Will Height. What do we think about him? High school senior. I think he's probably going to be three stars at best. But he might be the best guy left. Extremely hard and wants 700k. Well, let's see. We don't have to take him. Let's. What does the slot suggest? Yeah, it's 150k more. All right. Well, there's three pitchers in the first four rounds. We're, uh, three starting pitchers. So we're going to move on from here and start looking at batters. Looks like we still have three guys that the... the uh, impossible. Okay. But here's a normal one. David Vasquez. Uh, we only think two stars, though. Let's go back and see if there's anybody above two stars in the field. We do. We have a few guys that we rate a bit more highly. And really, only one of them, Colin Hall, is good on signability, so maybe that's where we need to look. But Carson Tucker at shortstop might be another one. Pretty decent fielder, plays the midfield. They like him. We like him a bit less. The high school senior, he wants 650000 though. I think that's definitely above where we're looking. Holland Hall, though, pretty good speed. Plays the whole outfield. Singles guy, leadoff, kind of hitter, or a nine hitter. He's a little bit older, so he's already developed a little bit. It's not bad. He's a lot more affordable. Let's let's go with this guy. So Colin Hall. McMenid for slot was four ten. And that's our recommendation, so there you go. Oh, there's Carson Tucker still. But those guys apparently are very hard to sign. Where are we at? We've got three million left. We're definitely down there now on Okay, 
a slot for David Vasquez. College. We're definitely not as big on him, but he can play second, third, or short. We think he can play short. That's, that's good. His demand is 240k. Signability is pretty normal. Or past the rounds where you get a bonus. Okay. So now we need to just kind of start picking guys up. Well, Urban's the last one that they have placed highly. And we don't think that highly of him, but... We'll take him, even though it says it's possible. Coming out of high school. Doesn't hurt us if we don't sign everybody. Okay, both are difficult. Both coming out of high school. We should start going for guys that we can sign, like Brett Auerbach. It's a great name, by the way. Someone we can sign. Last round we did somebody we couldn't sign. This round we need to do somebody we can sign. Brogdon, Trey Morgan still available. Okay, very easy, Dylan Eskew. In that case, we want to sign you. Yeah? We'll take a chance here. Both of these guys are relievers with lower potential, which is not great. Let's get into uh, our scouting department and what they have to say about these guys. That is my scouting department? Or did you not change? Only one of these guys is not a high school player. I think we're getting down to the two stars. This is my scouting department right now. Short stop. Okay. Tremendous speed and a good fielder. So we'll take uh, take him. All right, we might be getting into the auto draft stage here to wrap this thing up. Not even sure what round we're into anymore, but we're eleventh round, so we've done the first ten rounds. Bonus demands of drafted players versus current offers. Kind of passed it, but we'll we'll see if we can get these guys signed. Uh,
Trey Morgan's still there, but it does not look likely that he'll be signable, and that's kind of the big thing at this point. Go ahead and finish up the draft, and that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Negotiations ready to begin. Be safe out there. Bye for now.